Hey everyone, Steven here, and I finally got my hands on a Steam Deck, so this is a first impressions video after spending roughly two weeks with it. I wanted to get one when they launched, but between delays and orders and wanted to see how Valve would support the Steam Deck, I decided it was best to just wait. It finally felt like the right time to reserve one, so I went ahead and reserved the 256 gig model, thinking it would be in right around Christmas to make for a great present for me and my son. But to my surprise, I actually got an email a couple hours after reserving it saying that my Steam Deck was ready to ship and I could pay. The shipment on this thing was super fast and after reserving it and paying for it on a Monday, I actually had the Steam Deck in my hand by Sunday. I personally went with the 256 gig model because after watching some videos of boot times with the internal storage versus a micro SD, it was just a couple seconds difference with most titles. So I figured I would just take the difference between the 256 and 512 model and put a micro SD card in this, which I ended up getting a 512 gigabyte one. This is obviously a video of me unboxing it and they give you instructions to plug it in and do a system update when you first get this. That took a minute and after logging into the deck, I was up and running and downloading games. After the unboxing video, I wanna showcase as much variation in games and angles with the camera as I can, but I do wanna note that video of the Steam Deck here won't do this justice as to what this truly looks like in person. Cameras make this look way more pixelated than it actually does when you're playing it. That was something I was blown away by, which was just how smooth the games actually look in person, since most of the videos I've seen of the Steam Deck have games looking more pixelated than I was hoping it would look. Moving on though, my first impression here is this thing is incredible. The quality of the product that Valve has brought to the market is truly a thing of beauty. Between the tech specs, overall aesthetics, customization, and options this delivers, I have to say I almost can't believe this product is out there, but I'm sure glad it is. So if you came here for that part, there it is. But if you want more detailed explanations of these things, keep watching the video. Now I do want to go over everything in separate sections to make sure the video flow isn't all over the place. So I'll cover aesthetics and layout first, the operating system after that, then game quality, then the game options, and cool things I found that you can do last. I won't cover the specs, there are plenty of tech channels that get more in depth with the testing than I will here, but I do want to give a small comparison that I haven't heard as many people talk about, which is the Steam Deck is roughly 1.6 teraflops, and the original Xbox One was 1.3 teraflops, and the PlayStation 4 was 1.84 teraflops. So think of this as a portable console that's in between the Xbox One and a PlayStation 4. Now teraflops aren't the best metric necessarily to go off of. As a sweeping generalization here though, I think that they're okay. With that tidbit out of the way, let's move on. Starting with the aesthetics, I really like the matte finish this has and the buttons and layout is similar to a console controller, more notably the Nintendo Switch. And to me, just in terms of the layout, this feels really good. The grip here feels comfortable, but I have noticed the wider grip here makes my hands ache with longer use. About the 40 minute mark, my hands begin to get tired. I think for every person, this is going to be a different experience. And I would assume people with smaller hands might struggle a little bit with the layout. Although my son doesn't seem to have any trouble here and his hands are smaller than mine. The touch pads aren't something I use much at all, but switching over to the desktop mode, you will use these to navigate that and it works pretty good there, which the desktop mode is something that I'll be talking about in more detail in a little bit. The haptics on these touchpads are really good and can be adjusted to your liking or even turned off if you don't like them. This can be done from the calibration and advanced settings in the controller tab. The joysticks feel decent both in terms of comfort and responsiveness, although I can definitely see why some people replace them with other ones. In some games, I would say these have a loose feeling to them even after calibration in the settings. I think I'm spoiled with the Xbox Elite 2 controller here though, so it might be something I swap out like Linus did for his Steam Deck down the road. The pads on the back here can be set to whatever you want them to be typically in a game's controller menu, with some even being set by default, but more often than not I found them to not be set to anything, at least with games I've tested so far. These are gonna take some time for me to adjust to personally with games in general, but I can see the use of them. And for more skilled players, I can see these increasing their speed and precision. 
The USB Type-C charging port on the top is something I think half of the people will like and the other half won't. I'm assuming this location also has something to do with the location of the battery. In the future, I'd like to see another USB Type-C port on the bottom if possible. That way you just have options. This would also allow the user to choose where they plug the power cable in while also giving them more options for peripherals. I personally have been using my Razer Barracuda X headset with the Steam Deck and it uses a Type-C dongle so I can't charge this and use the headset at the same time. Which the Barracuda X headset is still one of my favorite portable headsets and I use it with the Steam but I also use it with the Nintendo Switch. It's just one that's very light, has rich sound to it and it's great on the go. I will make sure that that review pops up so you guys can click on that if you want to watch it. The Steam Deck does have an auxiliary input at the top also, so if you do use that over some type of USB Type-C dongle, or you could just use Bluetooth headsets with this as well, that works really good. I've noticed some issues depending on the headset, but in general it works pretty well. For those times it doesn't work so well, like with my AirPod Pro 2s, which can be finicky, I'm hoping down the road that Valve can do an update that improves this. Now. The Steam Deck has two speakers on it, and I've seen other videos where they talk about how good they are. I was blown away by these. They are very, very good. Not only do they get really loud, but they do really well with the 2.1 channels, so it creates a good sense of space for games. So I actually want to do a quick sound test with The Witcher 3 and a water fountain that's in game. Next is the Steam and Quick Access buttons. The Steam button brings up the menu and it also doubles as a Quick Shortcuts button. Holding the Steam button down, it will show you all the shortcuts you have available. This is just one of many amazing options Steam has thought of to make the experience on the deck smooth. I haven't found any info on whether you can customize these, but the screen brightness and force game shutdown have been my most used shortcuts. The quick access has some great features with it, but I'm going to talk about that more in the software section. The options button is on the right hand side next to the A, B, Y, X buttons, and on the left by the D-pad you have the view button. There are two mics on the top left and right side of the screen, which I haven't used yet, but it's just another example of how Steam has thought to cover all the bases with the Steam Deck. The vents on the back and top exhaust heat and they have good placement with this because I've never felt it unless I actually kind of go out of my way to touch those areas. It does get pretty hot though, I can tell you that if you do touch it. And the fans do get a little loud, but with the headset on or the speakers on high, you might not actually notice it. If you're trying to be quiet somewhere though while playing this, that might not work. Moving on, the operating system here reminds me of the big picture mode you can find on a PC with Steam, and this is one of the big advantages I think Steam has over other competitors in that they've been working on the OS for this for such a long time at this point. Going from software to hardware might seem like the backwards move in some people's minds when it comes to tech, but Valve has been figuring out the software issues hardware potentially can run into and trying to make their software run smooth and intuitively regardless of the hardware. This translates to the hardware they've chose to put in the Steam Deck, but just as important, the software that makes it all run is so good in my opinion because of the high level of customization you can create. This runs on a Linux based OS, which I haven't used Linux in forever, but going into the desktop mode you quickly realize this is literally a portable PC disguised as a handheld. The way you get into the desktop mode, by the way, is clicking the Steam button, going down to power, and within that tab, there is a go to desktop button that you can click. Once you're there, this reminds me of Windows 10, and although it can take some time getting used to using the touchpads to navigate this, this opens up the potential for what you're seeing with people downloading emulators, changing the boot video, downloading various apps like Spotify or Netflix, and so much more. I haven't spent a lot of time in this mode just yet, but there is massive potential here. The main operating system is very familiar and easy to navigate, and the amount of customization you will find in the settings is great. 
The quick access button is another instance where Steam knows the hardware and software side. My favorite thing in this menu is bringing up the performance metrics that you can change to various levels depending on what you want to see. The downside with the larger amounts of info though are how much screen real estate it takes up. There's so much here I'm not going to be able to cover in this video, which is a testament to just how much attention to detail and what PC players would want out of a handheld that Steam has put into this thing. For Nintendo Switch players or regular console players, this may seem a bit overwhelming at first, but once you understand what you can do with the Steam Deck, it'll potentially be a gateway to wanting a PC. Next, the screen is a 7-inch LCD at 60Hz with a 1280 by 800 resolution and a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. This thing looks incredible in person. No, it's not going to blow away your PC monitor, but as I mentioned earlier, video of this thing doesn't do it justice. The pixel density, or pixels per inch, comes out to around 206 from what I've read, and for comparison, a 27-inch 4K monitor pixel density is about 163 pixels per inch. This allows games on the Steam Deck to look incredibly crisp with high visual fidelity without the need to turn the graphic settings all the way up. That comes in handy when wanting to maintain higher FPS. For AAA games like Doom Eternal, The Witcher 3, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, Spider-Man, and Horizon Zero Dawn, I've been blown away at how they look on the Steam Deck as it almost feels like this shouldn't be possible. One of the upsides of the Steam Deck basically being a handheld PC and running these games is the graphical options are still all there for these games and not removed or downsized like other portable devices. The ability to adjust all these settings has been fun to mess around with just to see what the hardware can do and the impact higher graphical settings can have on performance. With AAA titles, I've noticed higher graphical settings do increase things such as foliage density and smaller details, but it also tanks the FPS and makes the screen almost look too busy. Medium settings tend to do best with it providing good amounts of detail still, but not dropping the FPS to unplayable levels. The higher pixel density here makes the need for higher graphical settings not necessary, in my opinion, in the same way a 4K monitor can eliminate the need for higher amounts of anti-aliasing and the graphics being turned all the way up to max settings. This being a touchscreen is nice, but not something I personally use much just because it leaves fingerprints all over the screen. It does come in handy sometimes though when navigating the operating system and in desktop mode. The 60Hz with the screen feels smooth when it can maintain it, which is dependent upon the game. I've found more demanding games usually stay 30 to 45 frames per second with medium settings, which still look good, but you can tweak the graphics to get closer to holding the 60fps mark depending on the game and the settings you adjust. Sometimes the trade-off might not be worth it, but the ability to do this is so refreshing, especially after using a Nintendo Switch which comparisons to the Switch are inevitable because this is a handheld, but it really does just feel like a portable PC where the Nintendo feels like a console. The limitations with the games and operating system become more apparent going from the deck to the Switch. The Switch of course has a very specific library of games, you can only get there, but the deck has a massive game library. I've seen a lot of different numbers for the total amount of games on Steam, but I've consistently seen the number being over 50,000. The number of verified games for the Steam Deck is currently a little over 5,000, with more being added all the time. The Nintendo Switch has close to 4,500, including older games you can buy through the Nintendo Store. The Steam Deck certification means that Valve has made sure everything works as it should, and as you scroll through your library, you will see various icons next to the games letting you know if it will work or not. A green check mark means the game is verified, while a yellow information icon means the game is playable, but some of the functions might not work properly. They give you detailed information on this when you click on the compatibility tab. A grade no icon means the game is unsupported. The playable games with the yellow information icon that I've played have had very small issues here or there, but overall they've run pretty smooth. I've been playing Halo Infinite, which is one such game that isn't certified yet, and it actually runs very smooth, with the only issue being dropped audio sometimes. I thought the multiplayer mode wouldn't run, or if it did, it wouldn't run smooth, and I was wrong. It actually runs really great, and then I was nervous I wouldn't play well going to a smaller screen, but I've actually had some of the best multiplayer matches on this thing. The other option, if you have good Wi-Fi, is to stream games that aren't compatible yet from your PC to the Steam Deck. I've done this with Destiny 2, and in general, it works really well. 
There are the occasional issues where the frame rate drops, but I've noticed I can remedy this by dropping the resolution down from 4K to the 1280 by 800 so my PC isn't working as hard. The game will be playing on your PC simultaneously, so it's not a long-term solution if you want to play these games on the go, but when I want to play Destiny 2 in bed, I can now, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, the screen looks really good in person. You have a massive game library with more games being verified all the time. You have some that aren't verified, but they're still playable, and they may have the occasional hitch, but overall usually play really good. And if it's not playable and you have good Wi-Fi, you could actually stream games to the deck. So there is a huge plethora of options with the Steam Deck right out of the gate, which is really great to see. So I tried to section out everything according to what I said as best as I could. One thing I did notice, cool things that you can do with the deck. There are so many different things. I kind of sprinkled them throughout this. I think the streaming is really cool. I think the desktop mode is really, really cool. And then from that desktop mode, being able to add emulators, being able to change the boot video, download Netflix or Spotify and all these things that you can do to essentially modify this thing is really cool to see. One last section here though is what I would like to see with the Steam Deck down the road instead of things that I don't like because as a whole package I don't have a ton of negatives here. So this is my brain looking to the future and the cool things we could see with a Steam Deck 2. I could see Valve creating a pro version of this down the road with an OLED screen with a 120 hertz refresh rate and perhaps with that we could see a slightly larger screen option for those that want it. I think the thumbsticks could stand to get an upgrade with that and an extra USB Type-C port would be great. They could increase the battery size but that would also make this heavier and the battery life here is pretty solid anyways but we could have improvements in batteries that do make it possible to get more playtime. Last would be an extra micro SD slot just to maximize storage here without the need to replace the SSD. Again these are just things I could see down the road that Valve would add to the Steam Deck and all these possibilities just really have me excited for what Valve is creating with the deck. And that's just on the hardware side. Who knows what cool stuff we will see on the software side in the years to come. So the Steam Deck has made one hell of a first impression. And although I've never personally been a handheld gamer, this has completely drawn me in. And I find myself excited to game on it in situations where I normally wouldn't have the desire to. I'm hoping to get more into emulators and modding this thing down the road, but for right now there are so many games I've had on the back burner that I can play right before bed that I feel content just using this as is. If you have any questions about my experience with the Steam Deck, let me know in the comment section. And if you've been on the fence about getting one, I definitely would encourage you to get one now, especially considering you can order one with no delays on shipment. And Steam has had so many updates done since launch and continues to improve the user experience that it just feels like the perfect time to jump in. Well, that's going to be it for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me, and I'll see you in the next video.